Well, hi there. Poison dart frogs are probably the most exciting frogs that you can keep. There are obviously many frogs that are larger, but these guys are active, diurnal, beautiful, and notoriously poisonous. The thing is that their poisons are largely derived from their wild diet, so in captivity, they are not very poisonous, if they're poisonous at all. That said, I don't recommend licking any frogs at any time. But the fact that in the wild they are poisonous means that these guys are incredible. They possess beautiful and bright aposematic coloration. We discuss aposematic coloration in some detail in this video, which you should totally watch. But aposematic coloration functions to indicate to potential predators that they might regret attempting to eat one of these frogs. Generally, this warning is very effective. As a result of being well defended from predators, they can be bold and conspicuously active even during the day when most frogs are hiding. This means that you will actually see these frogs being active and going about their daily lives. This is a reason that these frogs are popular with people that keep tropical fish but have grown weary of water changes. This species of poison dart frog, Dendrobates tinctorius, is one of the largest and most diverse species out there. Also known as dying poison frogs, these dying poison frogs come to us from Josh's frogs, which is one of, if not the best, place to get poison dart frogs on the planet. They have a wide selection of dying poison dart frogs, also called tinks because of their species name, Tinctorius, as well as almost every other species of dart frog that you can imagine. And they sent us these frogs because it is obvious that poison dart frogs make safe, beautiful, and fascinating pets, but we need to figure out if they make good pets. And is the poison dart frog, Dendrobates tinctorius, the best pet amphibian for you. To help you figure this out, we are going to score the dying poison dart frog based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the dying poison dart frog a score of three out of five. They're frogs. They have all of the same problems that frogs always have. Primarily, they can dry out and they absorb, well, pretty much everything, including chemicals and pathogens, right through their skin. This means that if you're going to handle them, your skin needs to be clean and thoroughly washed of any soap or any other chemicals. Alternatively, you can wear clean gloves, but in general, it is best to handle them only when necessary. That said, it isn't like they're difficult to handle. They're small, so be careful not to crush them. Always check your enclosure doors and lids when closing them to avoid terrible accidents and subsequent tears. Speaking of tears, they're not poisonous or dramatically less poisonous in captivity, but if you do handle them, don't stick your hands in your mouth or rub your eyes. They don't bite, they can't scratch, and they reabsorb their tails long ago, so they have no tails to drop. You know that makes me happy. Overall, they're easy to handle, they're safe to handle, but you should still avoid it as much as possible. When it comes to care, we give the dying dart frog a score of three out of five. Care is, in many ways, pretty normal for a frog. These guys do great in planted bioactive enclosures like these. We'll actually be making a full video on how we built this one pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. If you don't already subscribe to this channel, uh, maybe now would be a good time to do that and click the little bell so you don't miss this video when it comes out, because this tank is stinking rad. The cool thing is, I mean, you can get everything you'll need from Josh's frogs. In fact, we'll have a discount code down in the description in case you decide to go that route. In any enclosure that you might build, make sure to provide adequate floor space as these frogs are not great climbers, though they can climb even glass. These guys need pretty high humidity and you're gonna provide this by regular mistings using water that is clean and free of chemicals. This means you need to treat the water. A misting system is a good idea, though you can do it by hand if you're very diligent. It's often a good idea to cover all or some of the top with glass or plexi to reduce water loss and maximize humidity. Make sure to use a drainage layer and use decor and substrate that are gonna handle high humidity without molding. These guys are from the rainforest, so covering the floor with leaves will best simulate their native habitat. Avoid really deep water as these guys are miserable swimmers, especially for frogs. Food will be the biggest consideration when it comes to caring for these frogs. These guys eat fruit flies. 
We discussed fruit flies in our video about the best insect feeders. If you haven't seen that, you can check it out right here. And the reality is that fruit flies are great feeders. But these are pretty big frogs, and they eat such little insects. This means that you're going to need to have quite a few fruit flies on hand at any given time. And this means that you'll probably need to get pretty good at culturing your own fruit flies. Let us know if you think we should make a full video on this subject. The main thing that you need to know is when to start new colonies so they're producing plenty of flies before your old colonies crash. You also need to know what to do if and when your colonies crash unexpectedly. They can eat some other small feeders as well, but fruit flies will be the staple. Lights, like you see up here, will only be needed for the plants. So be careful that they don't generate too much heat. These guys do best at room temperature in the low 70s Fahrenheit. That's about 22 degrees Celsius or about 294 Kelvins. Just make sure that your thermometer is in the right units. They don't do so well at 294 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 Kelvins. If it is a temperature at which you're comfortable around the clock, then they are probably comfortable as well. But if you and everyone you know is dying, then you have your units wrong. And speaking of dying, that gets us to hardiness. One might suspect that a frog called the dying poison dart frog might not be that good at, um, not dying. Well, good news! That's the wrong kind of dying. These are called dying poison dart frogs not because they make a habit of becoming deceased, but because they were allegedly used to alter the color of parrots. Apparently, they were used to dye the feathers of parrots and in the strangest of ways. In the distant past, people in the Americas often traded in the plucked feathers of unfortunate parrots. Allegedly, if you pluck the feathers of a parrot and then apply a bit of dying dart frog toxin to the area, the feathers will grow back in different and wildly valuable colors. This process is called tapirage. Does it really work? I don't know. Perhaps Cheyenne will be interested in trying this experiment. But when it comes to dying, as in becoming dead, these frogs are pretty good at not dying. And for that reason, we give them a score of 4 out of 5. These guys can easily live over a decade in captivity if given proper care. Overheating, drowning, crushing, or accidental poisoning with chemicals are the main things to avoid. But otherwise, they should live a long, happy life with you. Especially, and maybe exclusively, if you get them captive bred. Which is absolutely what we recommend. Again, Josh's frogs. Just, just go there. Just get some frogs from them. When it comes to availability, we give the dying dart frog a score of 4 out of 5. If what you want is a dying poison dart frog, then you can find them at some pet shops, expos, and all over the internet. If you want an unbelievable selection of different localities of tinks, or about any other kind of dart frog that you could ever want, then you should just go to Josh's Frogs. They're the sponsors of this video, and I just couldn't recommend a company more highly. Not only did they have the frogs that they produce in-house, but they have knowledgeable staff that can help you with your questions, and they sell literally everything that you'll need to set up and care for your dart frogs. And if you use our discount code in the description, you can even save some money. Seriously, just check out their selection. It's incredible. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the dying dart frog a score of 4 out of 5. Tinks are one of the most affordable frogs, and they come in a huge range of colors and patterns for relatively affordable prices. The enclosure will probably cost more than the frogs, but one of the best things about keeping dart frogs is that you get to build a little piece of paradise to keep in your home. Again, we'll have a whole video on this enclosure soon, and you can get everything you'll need right now from Josh's Frogs. Other than that, vitamin supplements, water conditioner, and fruit flies will be your main expenses. If you culture your own flies, that expense stays pretty reasonable as well. All you're going to need to culture your own flies will be some cups, with lids with ventilation. You'll need some fruit fly media. This allows you to prepare the little food that the developing fruit flies are going to need and the adults. Some seltzer so that they can stay out of the medium. And an original colony. I definitely recommend flightless fruit flies for reasons that will become immediately apparent to you if you get flighted fruit flies. There are a number of varieties of flightless fruit flies, or as I like to call them, fruit walks. These from Josh's Frogs are the wingless variety. That's my personal favorite. There are winged flightless fruit flies as well. They just don't have the proper flight muscles. 
One thing that I should mention is the winged flightless fruit flies and the wingless fruit flies. They're not compatible with each other. If you breed them, you'll get all flying fruit flies with wings. So pick one type and, and stick with them. But that's all you'll need to get going. Breeding your own flies takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get it down pretty quickly. And then that's it. And that is why, in conclusion, we give Tinks, the dying poison dart frog, a score of 3.6 out of 5. Let's just face it, if you don't mind dealing with flightless fruit flies, then you probably want a poison dart frog. I mean, who wouldn't want a slice of paradise in their home with some of the most beautiful, active, and amazing animals on the planet right in it? And if you want poison dart frogs, then the dying poison dart frog is certainly one of the best ones that you could get. And Josh's Frogs has them in a wide variety of colors, so go check them out. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. They're so cute! Where are you guys? Come on out. <laughs>